Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Phil Petru, the assistant head of school and head of our primary school here at the Langley School. And I'm joined with my colleague, Anna Sharoma, who is our early childhood curricular and instructional specialist. We're excited to be with you today to talk about our primary school uh, and all the wonderful things that are going on um, in it. So just to give you a little background and agenda for what we're going to be um, specifically talking about, Anna and I are going to spend 15, 20 minutes going into some detail about uh, the happenings and wonderful things and um, some background about the primary school. Specifically, we're going to talk about some of the research that's going on and that's out there in early childhood education and how we use that to kind of align our practice and beliefs. Uh, we're going to get very detailed into um, our teaching philosophy and how we incorporate inquiry and play um, into our daily schedules and what that looks like. And last but not least, we're going to also discuss uh, how we celebrate um, childhood in Langley's um, primary school. So we're looking forward to discussing that with you. At the end, last five to ten minutes or so, we will take um, some questions. And so as we're going along and you think of some things, write those down. You can also type that in, and Anna and I will get a chance to um, answer those at the end. So first, just a quick snapshot about Langley. Um, for those of you that are new to independent school education, um, we are a intentionally a preschool through grade eight school uh, in McLean, Virginia. You can see some of the demographic uh, information there. We are on a nine acre campus, and we like to say that we are student, teacher, and parent centered. At Langley, we talk about the learn the teaching and learning um, along an arc of development, and we call this Langley's arc of development. And in the preschool and JK and kindergarten years, that's the steepest part of learning. Um, and of course, what we do is we think about how that aligns all the way through our eighth graders who graduate here and then move on to um, various kinds of high schools in the D.C. area. Um, but we think about this intentionally. We think about kids development cognitively. We think about their gross motor skills. We think about their social emotional learning all along, not just in the preschool, but how that aligns and how we help them develop until they graduate. Research is um, out there regarding early childhood. There's a lot of conversation um, in the news and in academia about the importance of early childhood education. Um, and a lot of studies are coming out, rightfully so, kind of validating the work that's being done by teachers and parents of three, four, and five-year-olds. And, and what they're saying is, is that really the quality of these early childhood programs is a really strong predictor of what kids will do both social and emotionally and academically um, in, in, in future grades or in life. Um, in particular, the social competence piece in kindergarten uh, has become a major predictor of those um, outcomes. And one thing that they're saying uh, that's important in early childhood is, is play. And as we refer to, it's not just any kind of play, but we call it purposeful play. And the way that influences and has kids interact with colleagues and friends in the classroom with adults really helps them lead to greater social, emotional, and academic success. We believe in inquiry-based learning um, and all of our divisions um, at the Langley School, and in particular, um, in the primary school as well. This is different from how many people probably grew up in school, myself included, where it was worksheet-based, worksheet it was um, quick rote recall-based, um, but in this case, with inquiry, we're trying to challenge kids cognitively and help them develop uh, more critical thinking skills. We're having them to be evaluators. We're having them think about applying what their learning is. We're helping them synthesize. So on this screen, it's just kind of an example of what we would consider to be probably traditional instruction that many people are, are um, more uh, familiar with. Like, what is the right answer? Can you tell me that answer? Who knows that? Versus what is happening here? What do you think about that? What else do you need to do? And very specifically, one thing we've committed to is our own brand of inquiry-based learning. And we believe there's five essential components that belong in um, an inquiry classroom. And so they're on the screen. It's community building, investigation, modeling, practice, and feedback. And what we've committed to in our classrooms, again, primary school all the way through, is having these elements be a part of it. And so um, what I'm going to do is now turn over to Anna, who will kind of give some um, examples of these essential inquiry practices and how they happen in our primary school. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So our inquiry practices really start with our community building. And you see some great shots here of students 
working in our primary school on a range of activities. But when we think about community building, it's really looking at building relationships across peers and across their classrooms. This shows up in morning meeting, but it also shows up in literacy and in math, where students are working collaboratively and they care really deeply about each other. I was just in the JK classroom the other day where I watched students support their friend grapple with another literacy problem that he was working through. And that's the example of what you're gonna see in community building across our classrooms. The next piece of the inquiry practices, um, which is very critical to our learning, is the investigation. Again, you see some great shots here of our youngest learners investigating. And like Phil spoke to, we're not giving them the answers, but we're giving them the opportunity to really discover and examine it for themselves. We know this is when the deepest learning happens. And in primary school, and particularly, we have those intentional investigation and purposeful play blocks. Our uh, Preschool students were outside on a letter hunt the other day. Our JK students were exploring different sized leaves that are falling from our trees on our beautiful campus. Um, and it was exciting to see students do that cognitive learning themselves without the teachers doing it for them. We also know that in inquiry though, teachers or students need to be given the tools to solve problems. And this is really when modeling comes in an inquiry. We know that intentionally modeling process or thinking strategies, ways to come up and solve and use materials is how students work best independently. So our teachers are incredibly skilled at modeling those thinking processes and saying, how would I think about that? In our kindergarten classrooms, they're saying, wait, let's look at what this writer did. What did you notice? Here's what I notice about this writer. Here's what I notice about this nonfiction text. The teachers are modeling those skills. So what then, when they go to the practice, they're really able to walk away with the things they should be looking for. I just spoke to the practice a little bit. And like I said, this is when students take what they've learned in the model through their investigation and really put it to work. It's when they grapple with the skill on their own. And this is really exciting because it looks different in each type of learning. So for example, the practice in a literacy and writing uh, workshop might look a little different than the practice in math, but in all of those opportunities, students are really getting a chance to take the skills that they've seen model and work through them. Now this practice isn't effective though without the feedback of the teachers. And you see two of our amazing primary school teachers in these photos giving students the feedback they need to help solve that problem. Again, it doesn't mean they're giving them the answer, but it means they're helping them think differently. They're scaffolding it. They're differentiating it to their needs. They're saying, I know what this student needs, and so I'm gonna help them at their level and really push them to what comes next. Feedback is so critical in the inquiry process because we know if students work independently without that feedback, we're not pushing them to the next level. I spoke about this a little bit earlier and Phil spoke to it too. Right now in our primary school, purposeful play is really serving as a core piece of what we're prioritizing and making sure that students are exploring materials and really learning through their play. As you can see, some of our primary school students here in their maze or exploring different trains. I've watched students create rich markets and the preschool students created a farm the other day and painted their own tractor. So the way that students are engaging in their play in a really purposeful and intentional way also highlights the planning our teachers have done to set that up to make sure that students are engaging in really purposeful play throughout the day. And that's preschool, junior kindergarten and kindergarten. I spoke a little bit earlier about the community building that happens in our classrooms, and that really goes hand in hand with our custom social emotional program. Phil spoke about how important this is um, for our students' growth, and here at Langley, we have a really unique and powerful approach to social emotional learning that starts with our youngest learners. Students highlight on the mood meter how they're feeling. They can go to the peace nook to calm down. They're labeling their emotions. There's a lot of intentional and thoughtful ways that we're engaging with social emotional learning all the way through eighth grade, but it starts very purposely with labeling emotions and learning strategies with our youngest learners. Again, I wanna highlight some of the 
um, very intentional academic instruction that lives within this inquiry model. So uh, you see some great examples here of the math work that lives within inquiry. And again, our math work does not mean students are just completing worksheets. It means that they're engaging with materials, that they're exploring and comparing and matching. They are hands-on engaging with um, the different materials they have around the classroom. We have math specialists that work with our students all the way up and they get intentional support in this area. And you really see within the inquiry model how students learn to take materials and start to describe them using that mathematical language. Similarly, our emergent literacy in our primary school is very intentional. It shows up not just in one literacy block, but throughout the day. Um, in their morning meetings, but in their uh, purposeful play block. Then they have their uh, literacy and writing blocks, but again, from preschool all the way to kindergarten, it's aligned. So our preschoolers are working with skills and our kindergartners are working with skills and they know, our kindergarten teachers know that they've gotten the skills they need to continue to develop that all the way up. So really looking at the range of skills that students are developing in literacy so that when they get to kindergarten and first grade, they're really becoming fluent readers. Something really unique about Langley is that our students, starting with our preschoolers, get specials all the way up. So our, our, I was just in a Spanish class in our three-year-old classroom, and it was exciting to see um, our youngest students um, saying buenos dias and greeting their peers and learning their colors just as they would in English, but also and in Spanish. They also have movement and music. Um, our kindergartners go to STEAM, which is one of their favorite, favorite classes. And so, again, the, the specials opportunity, in addition to all this other exceptional learning they're getting in the primary school, is really exciting for what students are getting here at Langley. And similarly, the learning spaces that are provided for all this learning are really tremendous. Phil spoke to um, the size of the campus, and um, with that, it means that our very youngest learners are getting uh, to use great facilities, the gym, the music room, um, our outdoor play spaces. Again, like I spoke to, I've watched so many of our students engage in their learning around the campus, not just in their classroom. And because of that, it sets them up for a really rich learning experience. As I said at the very beginning, the school is truly committed to being student-centered, but also parent-centered. And the school has a very rich history of um, working with parents. In fact, the school initially, when it was founded, was as a cooperative. And so parents literally had jobs on the school grounds, ranging from painting walls to repairing to mowing the grass, whatever it may be. Now today, um, maybe not so much in those kinds of roles, but we do have numerous possibilities and opportunities for parents to be partners in their child's education. So that's whether you wanna join our wonderful parents organization, which we call PALS, you wanna become a primary school aide that helps teachers in terms of producing resources and creating those for the classroom. Perhaps you wanna be a classroom representative to help with the classroom parties, go on kids' field trips, or work in our library. There's all kinds of um, opportunities uh, for parents to volunteer. So as we begin to kind of conclude this and get an opportunity to ask your questions, I want you to think a little bit about why Langley School. And we've put down five reasons for that. But when I really think about it um, to myself is that this is a school that is truly committed to being experts in these developmental years. Um, we're committed to also balancing the social and emotional um, well-being of kids so that they succeed and are strong academically. But also in terms of balancing that, we hire incredible faculty and staff. And with that, we look all around the country. We do national searches. We go to graduate schools. We go to various kinds of um, job and informational educational affairs, looking for the best faculty and staff to work with your children. So in summary, our head of school, Dr. Eleanor Scully, loves to say, if you get the foundation right, anything is everything and anything and everything is possible. And if you are looking for a school that um, is committed to um, the early years of education and you believe that these are the most formative years and looking for a place that has an incredible sense of community, I think Langley might be worth a look for you. So of course we want to get to know you. And so what we've put up here is some information about our next information session that is coming up in the next couple weeks. I would encourage you to reach out 
to schedule a tour with our admission office. The number is there and so is the um, email as well. We would love to take some questions. If there's any questions that are out there, please feel free to type those in at this time. And I see there's one already. And I'm going to click on that and see what that question is. And the question is, are there specific entry years at Langley? And are there, are there certain entry points better than others? Well, I would say one of our primary entry points is the primary school, and specifically the preschool and the kindergarten. And the question also is, you know, when should we think about doing that? Well, um, I would say as soon as possible, reason being that the admission season for independent schools has begun. We've already received um, a decent amount, a lot of inquiries regarding those entry points. So I would encourage you to reach out um, to us about that. And then I see another question that's popped up here. Thank you for your questions. These are great. How do you prepare your kindergarten students for the transition to first grade? Anna, would you like to talk a bit about that? And we can, I'll jump in as well. Yeah, I think what's really unique about our kindergarten program is that they're starting with the curriculum tools that actually is, are used throughout our lower school. So we use Reader's Workshop, Writing Workshop, and our Phonics program that our first, second, and third graders all use. And so it's really exciting to see the transition. We were just meeting with our reading specialist in lower school earlier this morning, and she said that uh, first graders were singing a song, and they said, we did that in kindergarten, because it's the routine for Reader's Workshop, and so they learned those same skills that really set them up, and so the idea is that our kindergarten students get the tools they need, because we very intentionally align our resources to make sure that they're really set up to be successful in first grade, and, and based on the uh, what we see from our first graders and the success they have, um, those in, that intentional alignment is really beneficial to our students. I would also say, um, to kind of build upon what Anna said, that we really think about early childhood education going through first and second grade. So though we have a separate division called the primary school that has our three, four, and five-year-olds in it through our kindergarten, um, we work very closely with our first and second grade faculty and staff. Um, we work very closely with Peggy Laurent, who's our lower school head. We have a curriculum director that oversees everything. I, as the assistant head, also have some a great bird's eye view. We're making sure we're talking about early child education, and it doesn't just end in kindergarten, but it continues on through our first and second grade. All right, I see um, another question here. As I, as I read, it says, I may have missed it, but is there integration between different classes and subjects? Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think um, because in our primary school, the teachers teach all the subjects, they are really intentionally planning that. So like I spoke to right now, our um, JK students are learning about sort of fall and family. And so they make sure both in math, but also in, in literacy and, and then their read aloud and then in their centers, all of those things are connected. So the thematic learning that's happening allows for a really intentional integration you see that then go all the way up again because the curricular tools are really aligned. Students are able to take the skills they need um, to move through it. We also have a spiral unit um, in the winter, which is one of our students and teachers' <laughs> favorite unit where uh, there's alignment across all the grade levels um, in the primary school. And uh, the specials teachers work with us and it's a really intentional learning opportunity for integration across our primary school. Um, I might be a little worried about my child making too many transitions during the school day. What is your opinion about the value of transitions and different teachers as student moves through the day, their day at this age? Well, um, in our youngest uh, students' um, classes, the day the schedule is set up very intentionally to support this. In that we know students will have to transition throughout certain parts of the day, but we do that really thoughtfully so that we're uh, thinking about the demand they have on certain learning in the morning and later in the day. Our teachers are really good about building in sort of different movement breaks that help kids engage when their recess is, is really thoughtful to make sure they get a quick break before they jump back into math or literacy. And so 
um, you really see students respond very positively that. Um, our teachers are also really great, um, particularly as our preschool students are brand new to us and they're learning all their new specials teachers. Every time before they go to a special, the teacher says, who are we going to see today? What's her name? Remembering that we are sort of a Langley community. And so even though you're going to see Miss Malcolm in the music room, um, she's also another one of your teachers. And so I think you see the real collaborative spirit um, across all of our teachers to make sure that even though another teacher might be engaging with your student or supporting you, um, they're all still your teachers. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It also really helps build the sense of community at Langley. And, and you'll hear our parents a lot of times, you ask them what they love most about Langley. It's that sense of community. And so even our, our little learners uh, at Langley um, get a chance to meet and feel, um, I feel like safe and warm because they know so many people here and they feel welcomed by that. Um, so um, yeah, I think it's a really great point. So I don't see any other questions um, I want to pre, uh, really say thank you to everyone who got a chance, probably during your lunch hour, to, to come out and listen to Anna and, and myself talk today um, regarding our primary school and the great things going on in early childhood education. Again, I would encourage we have the, the slide up here uh, for you to take the information regarding our information session. I would encourage you to take that down. And if you have other questions that it just comes to you after we, we hang up here, or a week from now, please feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to get back to you. So again, thank you and we hope you have a great rest of your afternoon.